Howdy, Beefalo Bart here, and welcome. Alrighty. This is just another video that's actually kind of targeted towards first timers and new users, and there might be some things here and there that uh, other people might find useful or not. I don't know. Um, but with that being said, just going to do some simple stuff, and I've got some other things that are actually going to be useful for more intermediate and advanced users later on on multiplayer been going through some courses online and trying to learn some stuff so that I can translate that knowledge over to you guys I can share my brain um, so if you're new to it let's get started with what we're doing here so if you're new to Unreal Engine 4 uh, I'm going to be using version 4.23.1, which is not the current version. So if you've just freshly installed Unreal Engine and you want to get the version that I'm working on, you click on this plus sign here for engine versions, and you'll see this come up. Well, I don't want that, but if you click on the arrow here, you can select which version. Of course, this version is not going to be in this list because I already have it installed, and you can select that. Of course, it'll be right here between these two. Why am I not using the latest version? Because it doesn't work for what I need it for. There are some issues with it and with one of the plugins that I use. So I don't use it. 4.23 works great, and I'm going to stick with that. <coughs> Excuse me. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit launch. And since you know, it's your first time, you're not going to have all these projects here. Don't worry about that. I have way too many. I need to start deleting some. Okay, so once we've come up to this, we're going to go ahead and go to New Project, and we're going to leave it on the Blueprint tab, and Desktop Console, Maximum Quality, and I'm going to include Starter Content. So if yours does not say With Starter Content, just click on this box here, and select With Starter Content. And then for the type, I'm going to go ahead and select Third Person. So you got blank, first person, flying, handheld, uh, augmented reality, in display, puzzle, rolling, side scroller, 2D, yeah, we can, you can read. Um, third person, we're going to select this one right here, and it's going to load a few things in here that are going to be useful for having as a character to walk around with. And I'm going to go ahead and rename this just by clicking right here, removing my project, and I'm just going to give it a name. Um... Whatever, new start. Uh, I have no, nothing else in my brain for a new name. Then I'm going to hit create project. And it's going to go ahead and create the project with the third person template and with starter content. And I'll show you what the starter content includes and why I chose third person. Okay, so it's going to take a couple moments here to, to load up. It may take longer if you've never loaded anything before, but just bear with it. It doesn't take long. It may hang up every so often, like it's sitting at 91%. Don't worry about it. It will continue. If it prompts you to install something, go ahead and install it. It's not going to be a bad thing. Yes, I have 46 gigabytes of stuff in my, my cloud here. A little too much. So it's installing the... The starter content takes a little bit longer. It's a lot of stuff inside there and it's going to give you a few basic things that you're going to need like if you want to quickly create a building or if you know you got wall sections doors things like that um, so here we go you're probably not going to have this right here if you do dismiss it um, I've got extra stuff in here that most people won't have so let it go ahead and finish discovering its assets and this is our first starter map here and I'm going to do a couple things in here that may or may not be necessary, but a few things that I think will be necessary. But the first step is I'm going to go ahead and click right here and change it so that I get a split view here. An important thing here is world settings. If you don't have this world settings tab over here, then go to window up top and then put a check next to this box right here and it will put that there. Now, if I hit play, it's going to work, but I have my mouse cursor is here. It's going to be in the way, so I'm going to 
click on the screen and then I can move my mouse around and swivel around my character. I can use WASD controls on the keyboard for moving my character around, spacebar to jump, things like that. Just the, the basic movement components. Alright, so um, we know it's a third person example, so I'm going to click on the A that's sticking to the ground and I'm going to hit delete. This cool little spinning question mark, click on it to where you see the gold come up around it and hit the delete key. Um, I don't like these visible, so I'm just going to drag them down and if you miss that, then all I'm doing is I'm clicking on them itself and I'm holding down the control key and, I'm sorry, the shift key or control key, yeah, whatever. Um, click on that, click on that, and then I've got an arrow here and I'm just going to drag it down. If you don't, you can click right here and get your arrow. And then you got all this lovely crap all that's going to pop up. I'm also going to grab this and I'm going to use my WASD controls. I have to hold down the right mouse button to be able to move around like this. But I'm just going to go ahead and take that and drag it underground. I'm also going to take my player character that you see here in the map with the camera behind him and I'm going to get rid of that. And then another thing I'm going to do really quickly is I can hit the build button and it's going to take care of these little messages right there. There is a way of suppressing those, but I'm not gonna. Um, we're just going to keep it simple for right now. Good day to you, sir. Welcome to the stream. Going to go back over the simple fact of sitting in a chair again, this time without any issues and errors for multiplayer replication. <laughs> the, um, the chair animations are in my Discord channel. And they're, of course, free to grab. So now if I hit play, what's going to happen is, even though the game mode override is set to none, and selected game mode, if I click right here, there's nothing there. I also still have this freaking stupid mouse cursor. So the reason why it's going to work normal now that we've deleted that other character is because we have a player start in our map. It's called network player start, but it's just a regular player start. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and hit Save All and Save Selected so that it saves our progress on this map. Um, even though I don't necessarily need to because we're going to go ahead and create a new map. And it is very, very simple. And we're going to start off with going to up here to the file and we've got all these different options to work with. I just want to do New Level. We're going to have three options. If you're using 423, if you're using 424, you're going to have four options. Um, but we're just going to go ahead and create a default. And again, we're going to have a few basic things. We have our player start. We have our reflection capture. I don't even need that. We don't even want it. I'm going to delete it. And then I'm going to grab my three things that are floating in the sky up here. And I'm going to control left click on them and drag them underneath the ground. And although this is an okay place to start off with, that's not going to be enough room. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the floor, left click on the floor, and delete that. And I'm going to go ahead and create a terrain. So I'm going to click on landscape and use my right click so I can move my mouse around and pan around. That's going to be a little bit too big for what we need. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to location, 0, 0, and I don't want 100. I'm going to change that to 0. And then we're going to change the number of, and you can't see what it says normally, but number of components. We're going to change that for right now to 1, tab 1. Oh yeah, I've done that plenty of times. Um, as a primary example, that one asset pack that I have that has 216 animations in it, um, no problem whatsoever. Not a problem. Because you retarget them to the UE4 mannequin first, and then you retarget them to the Sinti characters. You don't go directly to the Sinti characters. If you go through the, un the UE4 mannequin character first, you'll solve a lot of issues. Awesome, right? 
Um, so yeah, we've got this terrain set up here. It's a one by one, and I'm just going to go ahead and hit create, and it's going to give us all this stuff right here. We don't need to do anything else right now except click back on the place box to get out of that mode. And the only other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on my player start, and I'm going to drag him back. And we can look on details, and we can actually see our coordinates where we're, we're placing them. I'm going to put them back at 2500. And I'm going to leave the height alone. And if we hit play, it's going to work, but we still have this mouse cursor issue. But I'm going to go ahead and go back to my world settings and change my game mode override just by clicking here and selecting third person game mode. And this is fine for now. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit save all. But sorry, before I do that, let's click on content. And then anywhere in this space over here, right click, come up to new folder and maps. This is going to come in handy when you actually start making production stuff. You want a separate maps folder. So now whenever I hit save all, save selected, I want to select my maps folder that I just created. And I'm going to call this my main map. And hit enter. And then I'm going to hit save all again. Now it says lighting needs to be rebuilt, so we can just go ahead and hit the build. Or if you want, you can click the arrow here and select build lighting only. They're going to do about the same thing. So we're going to do some retargeting here in just a moment. Um, because I would like to bring in one asset pack that is currently free this month. If you don't get it now, you're going to hate yourself later. Because it's awesome. It has me wanting to buy more from the same guy, even though this one's free. I'm wanting to buy more of them. So, our character. Let me hit play here. And we have this mouse cursor. I want to get rid of that. That's the first thing that I have to do because it's going to bug me. Even though all I have to do is left click on the scene, and then I have full control of my character and I can do whatever I want to do. It's going to bug me that it's there. So, I'm going to go into the content again. I'm going to create a new folder by right clicking in here again, new folder, and I'm going to call this characters. So this is going to be our, our characters, our physical peoples in the world. And I'm going to right click again and new folder, call this blueprints. Okay, now we can go into that one, but then now we go into our third person BP folder. And then we're going to open it up or just go into the blueprints folder and you have one that's called third person character. I don't want to keep using this character. I want to always have a, oops, I screwed up. I can go back to default again. So I'm going to left click on him and drag it over the blueprints folder here and copy here. Now I can go to that folder and select it, hit the F2 key, and I'm going to call this my player um, underscore base. This is what I always call mine. It's just pure habit that I'm going to go ahead and hit enter and that's going to open it up. And this is a blueprint. Before I get involved in that, there's a couple things I want to do really quickly. And I'm going to go to edit and editor preferences. Asset editor open location. I'm going to change that to main window. It's going to be helpful later. And then I'm going to go to loading and saving over here on the left. And I'm going to disable autosave. So enable autosave. I want to uncheck that box and then close that. And it's saved. You are responsible for saving your own content. If you do not save it and something happens and you lose stuff, it's your fault. Plain and simple. Be responsible for your actions. Hit that save all button. It didn't cost anything. Now when I go into my player... You can see now we have tabs that'll go across and I can easily navigate between them without them taking up the full screen and not seeing that behind it. Now there's nothing we really need to edit in here or do for right now. Um, however, we will come back to that and actually do some cleanup later. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to right click and move over and use your mouse wheel to scr scroll in and out. I'm going to do our first bit of coding. Event big okay. All I did was I right clicked on an empty spot and I can start typing in here. And it's going to be event begin 
and you can see that it's already highlighted here. You can just hit enter or click on it. So event begin play is going to, and we're going to compile and save. Get used to these two buttons, hit them a lot. Okay, event begin play is going to, when you first begin existing in the world, you're going to run whatever comes after here. And for those that are not familiar with what this is, this is blueprint architecture. This is a hell of a lot easier to get started with than trying to do scripting or code. So I want to get rid of that mouse cursor. So I'm going to left click and drag from this. This is the executable pin. I'm going to drag from here and I'll let go. And then I'm going to type in set input. And I have three options as I'm starting to type it in. I want to set my input mode to game only. So that's cool. Well, we see what we have what now is called a, a reference here. This is for your player controller. So you left click from here, drag off, drag off. Okay, my enunciations are still poor. Um, so we're going to do get player controller and we want the first option here, which I just hit the up arrow, and get player controller. This is going to work just fine, and all I'm doing is left clicking, just kind of move it around and organize things. I like to be clean, neat, and organized, except for in the rest of the real world. But in, in my blueprints, I want them clean and neat and organized. Okay, so once we set the input mode, well, that doesn't get rid of the mouse cursor. So I'm going to drag from the return value of the player controller reference, and you see we get this blue line and I'm going to set show mouse cursor and then I'm going to plug the executable into that executable so simple um, it this is like a flow chart it goes from here to here to here to here and plays in a sequence so by doing this that is going to when I hit play look we still have the mouse cursor why because we didn't change our player character over in our game mode, in our world settings, we need to change our default pawn to our player underscore base. And now we hit play. No more mouse cursor. We can go right in and start playing. Yes, I try to avoid doing all this crap because that messes with some people's heads and mine. And I'm old and I'm grumpy. So it says you guys treat me like I'm ancient and stuff. So... Technically, we have a game. We can run around, we can do stuff, but uh, that's not as much fun as it could be. Um, I know, I know. We need more stuff. We need to do things. So, in my content, characters, blueprints, nope, characters folder, I'm going to right-click in the characters folder and create another new folder called Animations. Now, I have placed a RAR file in my Discord channel and the bbg-demos page that is going to be chair underscore anims dot rar and essentially it is three animations once you extract that and all I'm going to do is I've got them here extracted I have them selected just here and shift left click there and yes I have multiple monitors it comes in a lot easier when you can do it this way but if you don't, you can kind of move it, or, well, move this or scale it, however you need to do it. But essentially, all I'm going to do is left click and drag them in here, and it's going to bring this menu up. This is the import, oh no, scary stuff. Well, these are already set up to use the UE4 mannequin skeleton. So when you click on skeleton, where it says none, select the UE4 mannequin skeleton and import all. That's all. It's not that scary, right? Now, these are the animations. This is... And we're going to go ahead and hit Save All. We're going to have to edit one of them because I'm, I keep forgetting to actually correct it and put it back in the RAR file and upload the new version. Um, but the stand... I'm sorry, sit to stand is going to need to be edited here. So, we'll get to that in just a moment. I'll show you why. Now, oh, excuse me. Um, starter content. We need some starter content. We need something. This is going to be us sitting down in a chair. So if I click on the little small arrow, open up my starter content, if you go to the props folder, we have a chair. I know, it's exciting. We have a chair. Hey, it's free content. What do you want? 
So, why didn't I put a material down here and make this look like grass or whatever? Because if you look at the floor that's down here with no material applied to it, this dark gray large square is 100 units by 100 units. So each of these squares are 100 units by 100 units. When you're placing thing on your placing things on your map, if you're trying to get precise placement, you can use them as a reference point. But as you can see, there's smaller squares inside there, and each one of those is 10 units by 10 units. So why is it blinking? I don't have a clue. Um, but um, you have 100 by 100, and you have much smaller 10 by 10. The normal movement is defaulting to 10 on your snap grid, and I'll show you that here in just a moment whenever we place something in. But we can actually take this chair, left click, and just drag it right into our map. Boom, we just placed it, uh, an item in our map. Now we're here facing this way, we can tell because we got an arrow there, but if we look at this, the chair is facing backwards. So we can also look on our details panel if we want to line it up so that um, it's on the zero. We can grab the yellow line, which is actually green, sorry, and move it left and right until we find zero. And for our X orientation, there's also X, Y, Z right here, so you can see which way is which. And let's place this at 1800. But it's still facing the wrong direction. I can click on this, and this changes. And yes, there is a hotkey for it. But grab the blue one, left click, and move our mouse around, and we can actually turn it around. Now we hit play. We have a chair in our scene, but we can't do anything with it. We want to sit in this chair. So I'm actually not going to do what you would expect and actually add this to a blueprint and go about that way. I'm also going to grab the couch and drag this into the map and we're going to go ahead and rotate it around 180 degrees and go back to our arrows here and move it to 1800 and 250. The reason why I'm not going to put either of these two into a blueprint, I'm going to do it a little bit differently so that we can actually create a usable placement item that whenever we go into our map and, and we're playing, we can hit a key on a keyboard. In this case, I'm going to use the E key. And when we're here, we can sit down. But since this is larger, I want... We'll start off with two. Mm, there's no collision. Interesting. Why is there no collision on this? I didn't do anything different. Collision preset default. Let's um, change it to block all dynamic and see what happens. Huh. Interesting. Well, I'm real engine. That's something new. I've never seen that before. But for now, let's just go ahead and delete that. And then we'll go ahead and hit build. We don't need to. But if you're like me with a lot of OCDs and you see that there, whatever, we can go ahead and do that. It doesn't take long when there's nothing really in your map to do a lighting build. But when you got a lot of stuff in here, a lot of actors in your map, everything you add inside your map is going to be an actor of sorts. So, now we have this. We're going to show basically and quickly how to set up functionality in single player or multiplayer for sitting down in this chair. So, I want to come back over here to my content folder. And I'm I create a lot of folders, and that's so that you get in the habit of getting organized. I right click, new folder, assets, hit enter, go into it, and in here I'm going to go ahead and create another new folder, call it blueprints, go into that, and here's where we get to the fun part. We're going to right click, and we're going to create a blueprint class. It is going to be an actor, and I'm going to call this my sit underscore spot. You cannot use spaces. And I'm going to put a BP at the end. Notifications. I hate notifications. Um, so now we can actually go into this 
and there's nothing in here. We have to create something. So here's where we get into the fun part. And we're going to create the first part. We know we already have animations. We want us to be able to sit down when we get to the chair. But our sit spot essentially is going to be nothing more than a box collision. And I'll show you how to create that. And an arrow component. OK. So we're going to go in here to add component. And the first thing we're going to add is called a box and we type in box there's only two options we want the top one so hit that and we're gonna call this our entry point so we know what it is this is our entry point and even though it's um, it's showing the center is here it's sticking through this green grid thing is actually gonna be your floor and we don't want it to be there. I just happen to know that this is actually going to need to go up in the Z by 30. So I can click manually right there and put in 30 and hit tab or whatever, or just click out of it. And that's going to place this box directly on the floor. Compile and save. I'm going to click off of it so nothing is highlighted right here. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and create another component. I'm just going to click add component and type in arrow. And there's only one option. So boom um, and I'm going to click off of it now this arrow is going to be where we see our orientation for our chair to be able to sit into it so I'm going to go ahead and click on this and this is where we want our butt to sit so I'm going to drag this up to, to 60 so it's pretty much flush with the top of this for right now um, and I'm going to actually move it back so that it is actually on the edge there. So we're at negative 30 on the X, 0 on Y, and 60 there. So that's where we're going to start. Now, compile and save, compile and save. You're going to have to do that and get used to it. Click on the event graph. And I'm going to left click and Select all this and hit delete. Boom, we don't need any of that. Compile and save. Variables, variables, variables. You always need variables. So if you look, there's a variables right here. Click on plus variables. And this first one is going to be is available. Because when we do this in multiplayer, we want to know that the chair is available so we can sit down in it. Okay. We're going to click on plus variable again and we're going to type in chair transform but that's not a transform that's a boolean if we look over here variable variable name variable type we want to change the type from boolean to transform it's the name chair transform you can see the the color of the little sausage there is turned orange so we're going to hit compile and save and if we look, chair transform has nothing there. We will fix that here in a moment. And we didn't change any of the options on is available. So the next lovely thing we want to do is event begin play. But there was one there when we first started. Yeah, whatever. Hush. All right. So on event begin play, what we want to do is we want to create this variable we want to assign that to something so let's go ahead and get a reference to our arrow and all I'm gonna do is left click on the arrow drag it into our event graph here and I can move it around wherever I want it to be so it's nice and neat and clean and then what do we want from this we want to get to where we can left click and drag this into the map our chair transform and we have two options of get and set and I'm gonna set we want to set this value, connect our, our executable pins. <laughs> I delete it because I have OCDs and I have to delete things that aren't neat and clean. And there was notifications off of it, and I hate notifications. <laughs> Just going to make a little bit better room right here. So where do we get this chair transform from? Yeah, transform from. All right, we're going to drag from our arrow, and we are going to get our world transform what is a transform you ask you ask I heard it don't lie to me um, 
A transform is going to be your XYZ, your position in the world, up, down, left, right, and it's also going to include your scale and of how big it is and your orientation, which way is it facing. So you're going to have location, rotation, and scale. And all I'm going to do is connect the orange to the orange. So we now have on event begin play we're going to get a reference to our arrow and we're going to find out where it is in the world and we're going to set this value here okay we're going to be doing more here in just a minute but let's go ahead and compile and save the next thing we need to do is while we're here we're going to right click go to transformers right right click on entry point and come to event add event on component begin overlap pow nice and easy now from other actor we're going to cast to player underscore base which is our player character and I'm going to neaten that up and this is because we want only the player character to be the one that does this or can do this we don't want bots to be able to come sit in our chair. And before I get carried away, we're going to have to go to our player character and add some stuff in here. So I'm going to hit compile, save, and then quickly on entry point again, I'm going to right click, add event, on component end overlap. And we can select our player base by clicking on it and control W and it will copy and paste a new version of it in and I'm going to connect the executables and other actor to my object reference. Now, compost and save, I mean compile and save. We need to go to our player. Player underscore base. And in our character, we need to create, and we're going to do this first and then we can talk about replication part of it later. Um, we're going to go ahead and create by right clicking on here a keyboard event so we're going to type in keyboard and then the E key so space E come up E keyboard E if you don't like keyboard E tough do it anyway um, but you can always change your input key here game pads whatever else um, that's more for another day we're going to compost and save yes I call it compost just because I'm weird uh, <laughs> So, we need variables, more and more variables. If we click on the variable button, the first one is going to be at chair. Question mark, are we at the chair? We need that. We need another one called sitting. There's S-I-T, there's no H in there, all right? And we'll put a question mark, are we sitting? Um, we're going to add another one in, and we didn't, uh, I don't know if I'm using it or not, um, may or may not, no, I don't think we need it in here, but, yeah, that's the two main ones that we need is, um, those two and then we need one more variable which is going to be the transform so I'm going to put in here chair transform and then you guessed it we need to go back over here change that to a transform compost and save now we have these variables in here we can continue on with the the chair the sit spot okay so in the sit spot now that we have those variables in here and we're ready to move on we need to ask a question and in number religion 4 the best way to ask a question is with a branch node so I'm gonna hold down the B key and left click and it's gonna give me a branch node if you can't remember that right click and just type in branch um, connect our executables no problem and this is we're asking a, a question what is the question is the chair available so I'm gonna left click and I'm gonna drag it in here and drop it on top of the red pen for condition and then I'm just gonna move it down just so we can see where it is 
is the chair available? The question is, is the chair available? If the chair is available, then we're going to do whatever comes off of this noodle. If not, then we're going to do whatever comes off of this freaking noodle. How about that? So with that, what we need to do is then, if the chair is available, we're going to drag off from our player. And this is where we're going to be able to have access to our our stuff in the player character by using this reference by casting to it. So I'm going to drag off drag off from here <laughs> and I'm going to set at chair and then I'm going to connect the executable to true move this up and I'm going to say yes by checking this we're saying yes is a chair available if it is then we're telling the player then we are at the chair we're saying in a sense this is an available chair so now I can be able to interact with it okay we're gonna compost and save and I can actually grab this and control W again and plug this one down here and uncheck the box so what we're doing with that is on component in there overlap whenever our player it overlaps into this box or steps into this box collision we're going to do this stuff when we leave that box we're gonna do this stuff this is what that that means so we're setting that variable here that we're saying okay the we're at a chair we're able to do something at that chair and you can see I just compiled and saved and got an error because I did not connect as player base to target and that will fix the problem so it didn't know where this variable was so we had to tell it that it came from this guy the next thing we need to do is we have this variable right here is available and we're going to drag this in here and set is available connect our executables and move this back over and again I'm going to control W to get another version of it and plug that in here we're doing two things at once we're going to leave that unchecked both of those but we're going to check this one so we're setting the variable for this chair chair is available so is not available sorry we need to uncheck that and check that one mixing myself up here um, so we're setting we're at a chair and we're telling the, the 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 rest of the world that looks at this chair this chair is no longer available all right so now we need to actually set the transform stuff and I'm gonna start off with moving back over here getting a reference from my player and we know that we have this chair transform and that's what we're gonna set now so we're gonna drag from here and set chair transform should not have named them the same thing um, naming conventions are gonna be very important so you don't mix up things especially when you start doing save game <sighs> yeah so what we've done is we've set this variable here so we can actually grab it from here and drag it in and get a reference to it and plug the orange to the orange so we're telling the player this is the coordinate of where your butt's gonna go simple enough right now whether it's necessary or not I am going to drag the entry point in here and I am going to drag from here and set collision enabled connect these and leave it as no collision what that's going to do is be a fail safe to prevent anybody else from being able to sit their butt on your lap we don't want anybody sitting on top of us <coughs> in the game at least <coughs> yeah so we've disabled the collision of the box collision so it's just a box it's not even a box collision at, at this point and then whenever we leave it um, we want to do the exact opposite so we're gonna grab the entry point throw it right there and set collision enabled connect the executables make it pretty and change new type to collision enabled the bottom option so it turns that box collision back on as soon as we leave it 
So that's pretty much what we need to do for now. We're going to leave it open because we may have to adjust our arrow component so we know where our butt needs to go. But whenever you're looking at it, you can pause the screen, make sure yours looks like this. I'm going to do something to make it a little bit neater because you see these blue lines are going through everything. You don't have to do this, but it's a good idea when you're first learning to, to figure this out. I'm going to drag from... Well, I'm going to take this right here, and I am going to delete that pin. I'm just going to, I was holding down the control key and left click and drag it down, and I got rid of that. We're going to put it back in, but I'm going to do it a little bit neater. I'm going to grab from our player. I'm going to come down here and add reroute node. I'm just going to throw a little pin down right here. And if I click off of it and then click here, drag somewhere over here maybe, and then type in node, hit enter. There's a hotkey for it. Um, I'm old and I forget things. So just want to position that, and then we can click it here. So all that's doing is it's rerouting it so that it looks neater, so you can see that this is how they need to be connected without them going through each other. So that's all we're doing. Feel free to pause and go back as needed. Let's go back to our player now. So now we need to do something because it doesn't matter what is happening with that chair. It doesn't matter until we actually get our butt there and can actually do something with it. So multiplayer replication is the dark arts. And you either understand it or don't understand it. Um, I think it's best, you know, if you, you're going to sacrifice a small uh, child to the, the, the demon god of multiplayer replication, um, don't let it be your own child. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> anyway, you can use your own child if you want. I'm not going to judge. <coughs> yes, I will. Um, so we're going to go ahead and replicate this as we go. And I'm going to not replicated at start and I'm going to do mistakes to show you why we're going to do some of the things that we're doing because if we go back to our main menu map up here and hit play it doesn't matter how many times we come in here to, to try to sit in our, our chair we can't interact with it because well you know yeah that's the thing so to start off with before we replicate anything and I'll explain why it is I'm replicating and what replication actually means because we all like to replicate right when we press the E key we need to find out a question are we at the chair so we're gonna drag that in here and either drop it in on top which puts it underneath there most of the time connect our executables we're asking that question are we at the chair if we are not at the chair I don't give a flip we don't care if we are at the chair we want to do something. And now I'm going to use a flip flop. And I haven't used this dad joke in a while, but flip flops are not just those fashionable shoe wear that you wear with um, socks when you go out to the beach. Um, <clears throat> anyway, we're going to use a flip flop, which means whenever I press the E key, the first time I do it, we're going to do this. The second time we press it, we're going to do that. So it's just going to cycle between those two. Okay. So what we're going to do to start off with is we are going to set sitting to true because we are going to be sitting at that point. We haven't done anything with the animations yet, and we will. We'll get there. Um, so we're going to set is sitting or sitting it to be a true factor, and then that's not going to do anything until we bring our animations in. So we're going to compile and save and we're going to actually take a look at another part of the dark arts. We're going to go to our mannequin folder, open it up here, click on the animations folder and we are going to double click on third person animation BP which is orange. It defaults to this for some reason and I'm going to go ahead and just click the X and close that one and then while I'm in here I'm going to click on default and I'm going to go back to here in fact, while we're here, I'm actually going to click on Anim Graph, and we have default here, 
and output pose here. I'm going to drag because later on we, we're going to want to use anima uh, animation montages. So I'm going to left click from result and drag from here and I'm going to type in the word slot, S L O T. There's no U in there. And I'm going to make that neat and I'm going to connect the source to the source. This is going to allow us to use. Um, I'm just going to leave it right there. No, nope, there. Allow us to use animation montages later. I don't know why that's necessary, but whatever. So now, you see the flow is, is going here? Go with the flow. We're going to click on Event Graph. I hate this, the way it looks. Okay, So you guys are going to have to bear with me. This is how I clean up the animation blueprint from the default here. So I click up here on the light portion where I get the four-way four, four -way arrow, and then I hit the Delete key. And same thing here and here because it's actually harder to understand and I'm going to use a mouse wheel scroll in and I'm going to move my event blueprint update animation this is the all-seeing almighty this is what you do when you're updating your animations I'm going to grab try get pawn owner and I'm going to neatly put it right there you can see we have grids in here and I, I like keeping things neat and organized there grab is valid basically is valid is is this true if so, do this. If it is not true, do that. We're not worried about any of that right now. I'm just going to drag these and neaten them up just a little bit. Then we have is in air, and we have these three here. I'm just going to move them around so that they're neat and then clean and organized. So you know that if you look at mine versus normal, well, why is yours different? Yeah, because I'm different. So there we go. Neat, clean, organized. Much easier to follow. Now the next thing we want to do here is from try get pawn owner. I'm going to drag from here, and I'm going to um sequence c s e g. I cannot spell S E Q U. I'm not going to click on anything. Sequence and hit enter. And I'm going to place this at the end right here. What is that and why do we need it? Don't really, but um, what this is going to allow you to do is from this point right here, we can split it off and run completely different tasks at the same time instead of trying to connect them in line with each other, which is going to come in handy for separating tasks. Now we can come from try get pawn owner and we're going to drag from here and say player underscore and that's going to give you the cast to player underscore base. Now we can drag this over here and connect this to then zero. And now everything we run from here and oddly enough, we're going to control W and add another one in because we're going to want to add more things in later and connect that in. So, it doesn't make sense yet, but if we want a bot to be able to do something specific, we need to run from here or we can run a different node from there. But this is going to be necessary for now, building in future compatibility. So, compile, save. And what we need to do is, we need variables. You're going to end up with tons of variables. Variable, and I'll show you later on a way of cleaning it up. We've already got is in air and speed. All we need is one variable for now. Sitting in chair. And we're going to compost and save. Now, we're going to drag from our player and we are going to get sitting. Get sitting. We're wanting to know if our player is currently wanting to sit down. And we're going to be using a boolean, so it's asking a question. So we're going to plug red to red and then zero to here. So we connect our executables in line from where we're going. 
And with that being the case, we're going to grab a reference to here. Another hot shot tip here, hold down the alternate key, left click, drag, and let go, and it creates a set node for you. I'm going to go ahead and control W. And yes, you can control C and control V works as well. Um, we're going to put a check mark in this one right here. So if it's true, it's true. If it's false, it's false. Trust me, that's necessary for this one. We're going to compile and save. Now, we already have our animations in here from before. So all we're going to do is now go to our anim graph. Double click on our default to make sure we're in this view right here. Basically what this is saying is this is our control for our animations, our primary control method that's easier to replicate for general use. And if you were to, to break these down individually, double click on this one, this is our idle or run. And, in, and I'm not going to get into this too in depth right now, but this is going to be setting the speed of your character. This is the main node we're going to be working from. So that's all that's important for now. And I'm going to left click from here and we're going to add our first thing in. And what we're trying to do is sit down. So I'm going to left click from here, drag down. I'm going to add a state. And we're going to call this sit down, you clown. Sit down. All right. So sit down. This is our, what we're trying to do. And if I double click on this, there's nothing here other than just the output animation. This is the animation that we want to perform whenever we sit down. I want to be standing to sitting, so I'm going to left click and drag that animation in here and drop it in, connect the two ends together, and there we go. I'm going to go back to default. Now, to be able to get into this transition, this transition, this, this is what these arrows mean, and this little two-way arrow here. The transition, to be able to go from your walking and running and everything to being able to sit down is your transition phase, and that's what this is. So we need to create a transition to be able to let us get to do this animation. So I'm going to double click on those double arrows, and I'm just going to grab sitting in chair and drop it right there. If we're announcing to the animation blueprint, hey, we're going to be sitting in a chair. That's what this means is, yes, we are we are doing this, or this is a true thing. Now enter that transition. So we're going to compile and save. Go back to default again. Now this is just going to allow us to sit down. Um, and if I go into the map right now, I may have enough in to actually start doing it. If we hit the E key now, nothing happens because we're not at the chair. We come over here and get close to it and hit nothing's happening because we didn't finish it here. Um, instead of setting to true, um, yeah, we haven't finished setting up enough stuff here. So to get into this transition, all right, I'm going to cycle back and forth here. Um, we're at the chair and we're setting sitting to true. That should then announce to the animation. Sorry, I'm jumping around here. Um, that we are intending to sit in the chair. <sighs> because for some reason, my dumbass put the wrong two executables together. Hold down the control key, left click, drag, and move it up and let go. Bullfrog, you let me do that. I blame you. You didn't catch me on that. Alright, so we're not able to do anything yet because we haven't finished our transitions. So let's just go ahead and finish the uh, third person animation blueprint. So we go from idle run, we do our transition for sitting down, and we do our animation. And then we need to know what to do when we get there. So I'm going to drag from here and add a new state and sitting. Neaten that up and double click on it. We're going to sit idle. So I'm going to grab that animation and drag it in here. Uh, okay. Blame it on somebody else. I, I see. I would never do that. <coughs> 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 
So yeah, we're going to sit idle, and then we need to be able to get into that transition. So how do we get into this transition here? Well, to be simple, we want it to happen as soon as we finish the other animation. So just follow along with this. It'll make sense here in just a minute. Time remaining. I started typing in just time remain. And we want the time remaining ratio stand to sit. So what's happening here is we want to know that there's no basically no time left on this animation. So I'm going to grab from here and I'm going to type in the word float, which is a number with decimal points. But we want to see that it's less than, connect this, and in here we're going to change this number to 0 0.1. So there's less than a second left in this animation before we can actually go into this animation. All right, we're going to compile and save. We've got one more transition to do, and we're going to drag from here and add one more state in, and this is stand up. We want to get up, and we're going to have to fix this animation here shortly, but let's go ahead and go into there and grab our sit to stand. Grab that animation, throw them in there, line it up, go here. We're not going to compile and save just yet because we need to finish our transition. So to go from sitting to standing up, it's sitting in chair. Well, we're not sitting in the chair anymore, so we don't want to say yes, we're sitting in the chair. So we want to drag from here and just say not B. And it's going to have only one option, which is not Boolean. So we are not sitting in the chair. This is, you know, the next logical step. We're not sitting in the chair anymore, so we need to stand up. And then our final is going from here back to being able to walk again. And to do that, we're going to do the same thing. Time remaining ratio sit to stand. And same thing before. Now, if you know that you're doing this, you can just hit that on the keyboard and it'll actually show that. And make sure you put in the point 0.1. Compile and save, and that should complete our animation sequence for getting into the chair. So, did I break anything? Um, the chair, we're setting the fact that we are at the chair. We're saying that the chair is no longer available. We're setting the transform in the player, and we're turning out the collision. May or may not need that right now, but I may come back in and change that. But why is it not working? I think let's go ahead and do that. Let's get rid of these guys for now. Because they're trying to do them all at the same time. And it's just turning it off. And it's acting like we're no longer there anymore. So that's going to cause an issue with, with the actual thing sitting down. So let's, let's finish up the player here. And in the player. We're set sitting to true and keyboard E. And we can actually do this and control W because when we're we do it a second time we're setting sitting to untrue so we can actually get back up. Yeah, we, we have to, to basically, from here, we need to do a couple things. Um, the first thing we need to do is we need to disable our movement. I'm going to grab our character movement. Yeah, that'll, that'll become apparent here in just a moment. So with our character movement, I'm going to set movement mode, and the default is none, and that's what we want here. Um, so we're going to do that. We can also control W because we are going to need it again down here. And we're going to run a delay. And connect that to that. 
and change our movement mode to walking. And I know from doing this, 2.3 is the delay that we want. That's 2.3 seconds before we can start moving again. So we're going to compost and save and make sure we connect our pins from character movement to here so we can keep the gods of Unreal Engine 4 happy. Alright, so interesting point here is right now it should be oh I'm going to blame you again for this. The reason why I'm old and grumpy and stupid sometimes. The reason why this isn't doing anything is we we, we haven't put the frickin' blueprint into the map yet. So we go to our blueprints folder and grab our sit spot and drop it into the map. We want it to be right up to the edge of the chair and we know we set this one at zero so we need to make sure we see this in, in there. So we want that, but the arrow is facing the wrong direction. So let's grab the rotation tool, rotate it 180 degrees, and this should give us the point of which we should be able to sit. So if I hit play, <laughs> hit E, why the hell are you doing nothing now? Okay. Um, it's doing that weird thing again for me. Now, we haven't told it to, to sit in the correct direction yet. We've just told it to do the um, the animation sequence. You see how he slides back and forth? We're going to fix that here in just a minute. But we want our character to face that direction so that we sit our butt on the chair and not in the air. So we can go back to our character. And after we stop our movement, the next thing we want to do is get a reference of our chair transform. And we need to, to set our butt in the right direction. So how do we do that? Well, we right click here and we set actor location and rotation. Drag this to here. And so this is a little bit neater. I'm just going to drag this a little bit lower. No, get back over there. And well, that's a location and rotation but that's a transform I technically could have instead of setting the transform I could have actually just broken that up but it's just easy I'm gonna go ahead and drag that over a little bit come off from our chair transform and down here towards the bottom is break transform and you do that and it gives you what you need this is gonna be our location this is gonna be our rotation and we're going to run as a teleport because that just seems to work a little smoother. And then we're going to drag from here, even though it says target self. Don't know why, but it just doesn't work correctly. And we're just going to type in self. And that's going to get a reference to ourself. Not anybody else. We're not wanting anybody else trying to sit down. We're going to compost and save. Um, now, if we come into our map, walk over to our chair, it will not work. I don't know why it does this to me, but now, oh, well, that's just not going to work. We're in the right direction. You see, our view is going to get all kind of weirded out and stuff. I have something different in, in other projects. Um, hmm. So how do we fix this problem so we're not screwed up here? Well, if we hit E, stand up, and we kind of get thrown back in there again. So to fix that issue, all we have to do is move our arrow component. We know that we need to come up. We go back to our viewport. Our viewport. Hello. Our viewport. Oh, thank you. Grab our arrow component. And we've set it here at 60 on our elevation. Let's set it to 90 on our elevation. Just raising it up 30 and walk over and I'm having the same bug again where you got an infinite loop how did you get an infinite loop it's close but not enough I want to move it forward just a hair if I try moving it it's gonna move it by 10 and I'm gonna go up by 10 I may only want to go 5 
but I can manually adjust these numbers as I need to. Where did you get an infinite loop from? I have an issue where I come over here right now and it's doing it now and if I walk away and come back it'll work just fine. So it's just a little high so I want to change my elevation and see his feet are off the ground too. Um, for the feet portion of it I'm gonna bring it down to 90 again just leave it there but for some reason whenever I'm doing this whenever I hit E it does nothing I walk away and I come back I hit E again it works just fine so we want to raise it up by I'd say five just to increase that just a hair so his feet are not in the ground it's okay if his butt goes into the cushion a little bit it, so if I walk away and come back, it'll work just fine. So that's pretty close. We could adjust it here and there. But now the issue is when we stand up, see how he slides forward and then slides back? To fix that, um, go into our animation folder and double click on Sit to Stand. Now I'm going to right click and move around my WASD keys. And if you notice, it looks okay there but if you click on root look where the root is the root should be in between his legs centered up so I'm gonna click on the arrow here so that I can move that back I want that to actually be first off let's hit pause here click on this little red tick tack drag it back to zero now what I want to do is drag this all the way back as close as I can to zero I'm going to hit key and apply and then save. Now when I hit play, it kind of moves a little bit, but that's okay. We can close that guy, close that guy, close that guy, close that guy, save all, save selected. I will figure out what's causing this issue where I have to walk away and come back, but now I sit down, stand back up, and most of that sliding, the reason why he bumps forward just a little bit is because of his capsule collision, and essentially what the capsule collision is, um, nope, I want to go back to my player character, the blueprints folder, and go to my viewport, and on the capsule component you have this pill that surrounds your, your character. That is his source of collision for primary collisions in the world. Um, it's a little bit big. Um, if you want, you can change your capsule radius to say maybe 36. It fits a little tighter to the character. And you can also, if you change the capsule half height, you can get this to match the correct size but what's going to happen is you're going to have to move your mesh around so that the feet aren't either in the ground or above the air. So I'm not going to bother with it just yet. But now if I hit play, and I sit down on my chair, no problem, get back up. It's still going to happen. So we can see that the uh, capsule collision, if we click on it, we can also scroll down here and see hidden in game, uncheck that box go back in and we hit play we can actually see that box around our character again I don't know why this does it to me but if I open up another project that has the same thing in it it may not do it so you can see our capsule has not changed it's still there it's blended into the chair a little bit but because our butt's sticking out of it it's, it's working just fine so if we go to stand up now we get back into our capsule and it pushes our capsule forward so we're no longer colliding with that chair. So that's why it's going to give that little bit of a uh, whenever you stand back up. So I'm going to go ahead and recheck hidden in game. So um, the fact that I'm, I'm hitting the E key and it's not working, it's an unusual little quirk. Because if I walk away and come back, I hit the key and it works just fine. See, I can't move while I'm in the chair. 
you'll notice that whenever you're moving around you'll actually clip through yourself I'll show fixes on that later on but that's the basics of sitting in a chair and to get it to replicate and because of the fact that I actually did it this way it doesn't have to be that chair I can actually I don't know, take a basic I can take a cube and throw it into the map and it just happens to clip through the ground a little bit anyway I don't know why they default it that way but um, it's about the same height I can actually add another version or in this case control C and control V and then just move it with the arrow keys and move that over there to their, our cube and just make sure that we kind of bump it back a little bit and actually now anywhere where we put that is going to become a place where we can sit down and just minor adjustment of placement of that little cube in the on uh, the map and we can put that anywhere we want and I think part of the issue is going to be why it's um not working the first time I try it but it does after I do that is because I think see it didn't work walk back over and I can do it again I think perhaps um, there's two issues that could resolve that and one of them let's go ahead and save all so we can save our map um, with the sit spot I might have to you know, I'll experiment with it but I, I might actually have to do a little trick and if it works I will recall it but what happens if we want to try this in multiplayer well, how do we check to see if it works in multiplayer the arrow beside the play arrow let's come down here and change the number of players to two and new editor window and it's going to open up two copies of it and I'm going to hit alternate tab so I can grab the top edge of it and normally I just throw the server off to a different monitor but you guys can't see that other monitor so what I'm going to do is resize this and yeah I know you can resize this in the editor but I don't like that so I'm not gonna so that's there and I can just grab the other edge of this one shift it over and yes you have to do it every time whenever you do it this way but if you're using multiple monitors you can just drag one off to the other monitor and not worry about it since we only have one player start they're kind of interfering with each other so this guy that's jumping up and down is the client we'll cover more of the client and server now this guy is jumping up and down as the server the server comes over here and I want to sit down in a chair you can see the server sees it it's working just fine for the server but the client you see this guy over here the clients like dude you're just standing in front of the chair what's wrong with you but your feet are sticking in the ground you got issues so the client goes to sit down and it's wrong just doing that thing again um, I found the bug in this and you have to be in the box to be able to get back up so they're not seeing each other correctly and multiplayer replication I've already covered a lot of this before uh, for some things this is gonna be the way it needs to be some things it's not so in your player essentially what you're gonna have to do is you're at chair select it category replication we're gonna go ahead and let it be replicated so we know that's what we're doing Okay. and sitting we're going to do the same thing and replicated now this is still not going to properly work in replication we have a few other things to do um, for this whole sequence of events we're wanting to do this so let's start off with a new custom event and we're going to call this client sit in chair and we're going to multicast this event by going to replicate and multicast and we're going to change these out 
we want when we press the E key we want to activate an event well that's gonna work but if we try plugging this in here let's see what happens so now for client set in chair all I have to do is from pressed type in client and I can call that custom event anywhere that I need to call it so what happens if I just run it like it is and because of my sanity I am going to put the server on a different monitor and we can see the, the client client decides he's going to come over here and sit down in the chair I want to sit down and it broke um, this is going to piss me off leave and come back sit down it's breaking client is seeing himself as sitting down but the server sees him as still standing up but what happens if server goes over here and wants to sit down but but I want to do it correctly the client can see the server sitting down the server can see the server sitting down but the clients not inside this loop somehow so we need to remove this so I'm gonna move this over here and I'm gonna break that for now and we need another custom event so custom and server sit and chair and I'm gonna move these around so that this is now over here and this is here we're gonna take this and run on server this is gonna change in a future update we're also gonna make that reliable let's make sure that we turn that to reliable as well so now what happens if we just plug these in together um, is this gonna work I know there's one more step we need to add so so here's our client it comes over here uh, I want to sit in the chair and you're broke ass in the damn chair uh, I can't why want I why can't I sit in the chair and the server's like well, I don't know what your problem is but now everything's broke so we need to add one more step in here and call this event from here when we press the E key which is server sit in chair so we're running when we press E we run this which is this which says run this which is this talk about going around your butthole to get to your elbow but will this work all right so here's our, our client hi I'm the client sit down huh it's working server sees the client sitting down the client sees the client sitting down well should I want to sit down well I'll go ahead and sit down server sees himself sitting down client sees himself sitting down is it necessary to to switch as authority not necessarily because of the way that we're running this so can't move no problem can't move no problem and let's go ahead and move these off so here's our server going off to the other screen so now the server is going to stand up no problem yay and there was much rejoicing but now the client I want to stand up and there was much rejoicing there was no need to run switch as authority on that one because it, it just works um, but there is some other issues that we will have to address later on and I'm sitting in the chair it was like screw you I want to sit in the chair not a very good chair but I'll sit here anyway so there's that sitting in the chair works and we're going to click here build lighting only and let it run its thing um, useful to have the sitting and chair thing because if you're playing through and you want to um, to add in some furniture to your map then you might want to be able to sit down I'm gonna go back to sitting in chair but this not working I have to go away and come back and sit back down again um, and I stand back up and I can't move until I'm done with the animation and I'm good uh, but the 
fact that it's actually not working correctly when you first walk over to it I think is a combination of two things and to experiment with that I was going to save on there this all works this is fine the chair transform has nothing in its transform to begin with except scale which is always going to be one to one to one um, I think the problem is actually going to be the fact that there is nothing there uh, when you first get into it um, you go to your blueprint folder for your assets and the sit spot everything is great we're setting this when we first get into the map everything should be working per perfectly fine um, I, said, I will experiment and find out what the initial issue is um, if maybe I need to throw in an is valid or something like that just to get the uh, the final bit to that working but by using the sit spot idea if we came back in here to our props and again I don't know why this has no collision to it it's always had collisions in the past I don't know if anybody else has had that issue before. So if I do that, hit play, I don't know why it doesn't have collisions. I mean, I can open up this by double clicking on it. Thank you. If I click on the collision and show the simple collisions, for some reason, this time whenever I brought it in, I didn't do anything any different. It just has no freaking collision box whatsoever. If I click on complex collisions, you can see there it has them. Um, I don't know why this time it doesn't have collisions. Not so much worried about it. Um, I can just grab this, Control C and Control V or Control W, and I can add these. I can put two of them on here. I'll put three of them on here. Have the ability for more than one person to sit down on this couch. So if I hit play, come over here. Again, I will have to figure out this issue. He's sitting on there because he's doing the animation. And even though there's no collision on the couch, it doesn't really matter. Um, other than the fact that you can walk through it. Um, and get back up. You know, I'll walk away from it. I can come over here and, and sit down on this one. I don't know why it it's doing that where I have to walk into the collision box, walk out, and walk back into it again. I don't know what that issue is. And I could do it a hundred times, it'll do the same thing, but then I'll do it another time and it'll work perfectly fine. So now if I walk over here to sit down, it doesn't work. I gotta walk out, walk back, and I can sit down. I'm setting the variables correctly. I can't use this one. I have to walk away, come back, and then I can sit down. It's working correctly every time. It's just that um, for some reason, the first time I activate it, um, it's just not working. It's working every time, but why? Because I'm real engine four. Just the first time you choose to sit down at a particular chair, it's just like logic tells me that um, there's something wrong with the sit spot blueprint not being right. But by doing that, we have all the ability to create this. Um, I can actually another thing really quickly. I'm gonna right click on the name of our map and create a folder and map stuff. Make a new folder. And first off, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of my sit spot, chair, couch, and that ugly cube. Delete those things. So now grab all these things here and shove them into that folder collapse it and now it's clean I can actually place things in here as I want to so if I want to go ahead and grab a couple chairs and make a little scene here make a scene of myself I'm actually gonna put these at um, 
zero, zero. So that would be in the middle of the map. But I'm actually going to move this one back. Grab the table. It will go in zero, zero. Now, here's the thing, is if I put the sit spot with the chair that close to the table, how is that going to allow me to get into the chair? You can actually create a different version of it and actually put a thing where it teleports your character and it just doesn't look right. Short term, until I come up with a better option, I'm just going to move it back a little bit from here. So we're at 200. Just copy and paste, move it at 200, rotate it around. Control click, control C, control V, grab both of them, spin it 90, and put that on the zero line, and make sure that each one of them is 0, 200, and this one is 0 and negative 200. Not 20, 200, stupid. Then we can grab our sit spot. I should probably come up with a different name because it sounds like I'm saying something totally different. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but I have more of a speech impediment after that botched, botched dental work. After that dentist screwed my uh, dental work up. I just have had um, more of a pronounced issue with certain words and certain semblance. You know, one of them big fancy words. Um, so I'm just going to set these up to where they're appropriate for the chairs in the scene. So that whichever one I choose to use, I can come over here and sit down. And you know what, if we want to decorate our scene a little bit more, we can go back to our props. And we have this mm, fancy little statue we can put here on top. And we can always just manually adjust so it's zero, zero, zero. And it automatically set its height so that it's sitting on top of the table. Um, so that's lovely. And then if we want, we can put other crap in here. We can actually build a scene. If you look at architecture, you actually have wall sections, floor sections, pillars. Um, Blueprints, you got some working lights. So if you had a floor and a ceiling, you want to put, say, this in here, and then move it up, go to zero, zero. And let's put that at 300. That's too low. Let's put it at 400. So we hit play all the way over there. And our shadow is still there because we haven't rebuilt our lighting yet. But there you go. We just created our first little thing. And then sit your behind down. Sit down. Um, the clipping part, we'll look at that in another video. It's it's an easy fix. But we created our first scene. And we are not sitting squarely in the chair because either one or the other, that's not at zero. Not lined up perfectly. No wonder. That's the basics. As you're building your map, you can just grab things like from your architecture here. And now these are already here and on the ground, but if you want to add the floor sections in, just grab it in there and raise it up a little bit. I'm not going to use the floor. But I'm going to use a 400 by 400 uh, wall here. And we know it's 400 units, so by putting it at, um, oh, that's kind of perfect there, 200 and 300, half of the, the distance here is going to be where we need to put it. You'll learn quickly um, as you're placing things in. It's easy enough to do. It's easy enough to put things into the map. Um, well, making a good-looking map is a whole different story. 
Now let's put a window in back here. We use the 400 by 400. We'll rotate it around 90 degrees. We know this should be at 200. And not at 200. Yeah, this should be at 300. And because of the position I put these in here, It's not going to fit perfectly. Thankfully, we got two different options we can do here if we want this to actually work correctly. Um, because of the spacing, we didn't make it a perfect width. So if I leave this at 200, and then actually Control C, Control V, and just because of my OCDs for symmetry and everything. There, and this one will go here. Then we can grab these two walls and just move them out. I'm just being weird now. We are done with the video. I'm just wrapping up. So I'm going to take right here, I'm going to put door. And I'll just rotate that. At 500. Move it over here to 600. And here's a little trick, especially when you're using this right here. Control C, Control V. I don't want three freaking doors going across. But since I already have these selected, I can actually uh, get right, right spot. There we go. Grab both of these. I want that to actually be a wall, which is 400 by 400. And I'm going to click that arrow, and poof, we change that. And I want the side walls over here, here and here and here and here, to actually be windows. So let's grab that window and hit that arrow. And now we got windows. And we can grab our floor. Well, let's actually use that to be a ceiling. Raise it up to 410. Why 410? Actually, let's go 420. So we can actually put it on the roof and it doesn't clip. So we can put this one at 600. And here, 500. Control C, Control V. And yes, there's other ways of doing this, but Control C, Control V. And now we've made it a rooftop. Now if we hit play, I got a little house to go to. Hey, look, and there's chairs. I can sit down. And there's lighting. Hey, how about that? So if we do a quick build, and we'll wrap up this video. Because I didn't eat anything. Yeah, I know I look like I'm famished. I know you can't see me right now. I actually need to plug my camera back in after I added the other hard drive in. I kind of forgot to um, hook that back up. Let's go back in here and play. Oh, look a little mood lighting. Seat. And there we go. All right, so that was just a basic intro into getting started with throwing a little bit of animation in here, being able to sit down in a chair and having some replication and so that you can do this in a multiplayer environment. So if I come back over here, change this to two players, new pie, because everybody likes pie. Shut up, everybody likes pie. There's our client. Client's going to come over here and he's going to sit down in a chair Lovely. And then our server is going to say, hey, I want to come in. How are you doing? Mind if I have a seat? There we go. 
There we go. Nice little cozy conversation. Two manis chilling, having a nice day. Oakley, Oakley. And Bullfrog, if you want me to stream again later and show you how I do mass um, conversions, like using the um, the animations from the what the hell is it called? The pedestrian animation pack with over 200 animations in one one pack. Um, yes, I have a lot of asset packs. Um, and again, it, this is not a free asset, but it's damn sure worth the money. The Pedestrians Animation Pack has 216 animations, and if you want to put these all together with the Cindy Studios characters, that is not a problem. So, just give me a shout on, on Discord if you want me to do, to do that here in just a few minutes. Um, I'm going to take a quick break, and I will be back shortly, or I can actually just, you know, whatever. But like I said, if you want to see it, let me know on Discord, and I'll fire up another stream here in about 20 minutes or so. And I'll show you how I batch convert over hundreds of animations at one time to be able to use them on Cinti Studios characters. Alright, much love, much respect. We'll see you guys shortly.